Do you want to build your first computer game, but don't know where to start? In this video, I'll walk you step by step through the process of creating a simple computer game in less than half an hour. Hi, I am Tess Encoder, an advanced beginner indie game developer, and on this channel I make tutorials and devlogs about making small computer games. If you want to start making computer games, but don't know where to start, this video walks you through exactly what you need to know to make your very first computer game from scratch. First things first, I'm assuming you know a bit of programming. This is a game-making tutorial, not a programming tutorial. However, if you want more a programming tutorial, drop me a comment and who knows, maybe I will make one. Step number one – choose a game engine. So for your first game, my recommendation would be Game Maker. It is a 2D focus game engine, which is used in many good and successful projects, such as Hotline Miami, Hyperlight Drifter, and others. And it is also free for non-commercial use. Step number two: install Game Maker. In order to use Game Maker, you will need to install it. Luckily, it is super simple. You just simply go to the Game Maker website, download the installer for your operating system, and follow the installation wizard. After you install Game Maker, you need to create a new project. I will choose a pixel project for the nice pixel art feel and name it. For example, my first game. One of the great things about Game Maker is that you can do everything inside the Game Maker, unlike Unity and unlike to some extent Godot. So, for your game, you will stay in Game Maker window until the game is complete. Step number 3. Basic building blocks. Game Maker was designed for smaller 2D games, which you can clearly feel by how few basic concepts they use. In Godot, for example, you have dozens of different node types. In Unity, it is even more overwhelming. In Game Maker for your first game, and maybe for your other games as well, you really need to know four main things. Rooms, objects, sprites, and layers. A room is your level, or scene in Godot and Unity terminology. Room contains layers, instances of objects, backgrounds, and UI. An object is a programmable entity. It has behavior, scripts and variables, and objects are the main building block of your gameplay. A sprite it is an image or animation that you use to visually represent something in the game, player or coin, for example. And a layer is a container inside the room to organize instances, backgrounds, tiles and UI elements. Layers also determine the drawing order and can be shown or hidden. Step number 4. Set up your room and organize your project. Let's delete unneeded default content to have a clean project. It is not required, but it is so much easier to have only what you actually need, especially when you start. The default room is your starting level. Double-click to open it. Set room size to 640 to 350 pixels. And change grid size from 32 to 16. You could disable snapping if you prefer. Now, let's briefly talk about project organization and naming conventions. We organize different building blocks to different folders. I also use prefixes to clarify asset types. Obj for objects, SPR for sprites, and FNT for fonts. This naming helps me to understand an instance type whenever I see it. Step 5. Create a player. Let's create our player object. Create object obj underscore player. Notice that it doesn't have any sprite, so we need to create a sprite. SPR underscore player.
you can use the built-in image editor or import an image. For the player, I will use an existing image and I will add a link to sprites you can download in the video description. Drop me a comment if it is not there somehow. Now I specify that object player uses SPR player sprite and I can then place the object, not the sprite, into the room. We can run the game and we see our player there. Let's add player movement. Open Obish player, go to events and create step event. Step event is executed every frame, so around 60 times per second for 60 frames per second game. I suggest choosing code editor. I always use code. GameMaker also uses its own language GML, which is very similar to JavaScript. Here is how we handle the movement. First, we define move speed variable. Then, we read keyboard input using keyboard check for left, right, up and down buttons. For example, for move x value will be 1 if right is pressed and minus 1 if left is pressed. It will be 0 if neither or both are pressed. Move underscore y works the same way. Then I update x and y coordinates of the object player by adding move x multiply move speed and move y multiply move speed. This works, but you see that if we move diagonally, we move unnaturally fast. This happens because both move x and move y are non-zero and that makes us move roughly 30% faster than we should. We will fix diagonal speed by dividing the move x and move y by the distance it would went during the diagonal move. That will ensure that we move consistently in all the directions. Step 6. Create a coin. We need to create a coin for our player to collect. First, we create object, object coin. Second, we will create sprite, SPR coin and import coin image. And we assign SPR coin sprite. Third, we place object coin into the room. Let's test it. Moving the player into the coin currently does not do anything. Let's change that. For this, we will use a common pattern in Game Maker controller object. Controller object is a sprightless object that we will put into the room to make things like state management or common behavior functionality. Let's create object game controller, no sprite. Then we place controller in the room, so game maker is aware that it should be run. And in object game controller, we will create a create event. It is like a constructor. It is executed when the object is created. This is the place where we are initializing the object with required values and define object methods and functions. And we will add an instance variable collected coins equals zero. Notice that instance variable don't have var keyword at the start. Then we will create a draw event in which we will draw text at the controller coordinates, showing current collected coins value, which is zero. Let's fix it in step 7. Collect and relocate the coin. We need to add some collision detection logic. In the simplest case, we can say that two objects collide if the rectangular areas those objects occupy have any intersections. It can be adjusted in multiple ways, but for now it is all we need to know. In object player, we add a collision event with object coin. 
There, we will increment the game controller collected coins value by 1. In the collision event handler, we can use the other keyword to access object coin functions and variables, which we will need shortly. First, we need to create a helper object, object coin spawn location. This will be used as markers placed in the different places in the room to indicate where coins are allowed to spawn. Now we go to the object coin and in create event we first call randomize to initialize the random number generator, otherwise the seed can be the same. Define a function relocate that get the number of instances of object coin spawn location, then picks a random index and get instances by this index and set the coin coordinates to the spawn location X and Y. Finally, in object player collision with object coin, we call other.relocate so the coin jumps to random spawn location on pickup. Step 8. Add time pressure and create the UI. So our game is already kind of playable, but not very challenging. Let's add some time pressure and create a game over logic. Go to object controller create event. Create new variable time remaining and set it to 10 seconds. Use alarms, which are basically events that you can schedule by some timer. Set alarm 0 to room speed multiply by 1 to schedule a 1 second tick. In alarm 0, we will decrease time remaining by 1. In the draw event, we will draw time remaining below the collected coins text. Now it is the time to create some game over logic. For this, we will use UI layer. This functionality was added quite recently, and I find it super useful. We go to the room and create new UI layer. Let's rename it to UI underscore layer, so it is easier to locate this layer in the code. To make nice background separation, we will create a background sprite for the UI panel. Small 10 by 10 pixels rectangle with semi-transparent gray fill. Then we drag the background into the UI layer to create a flexible panel. Flex panel. To add text to the UI panel, we need to create a font. So I will create FNT my font. I just use Arial here, but you feel free to use something else. And then I add text to the flex panel. Enable 9 slice on the background sprite and configure the slice border so the corners stay intact when stretched. and I set margin to 20 pixels. Then I need to create an object button. I will use the same UI background sprite to it and add text inside the button using the same font. I need to just stretch, padding and margins so button and text look correct.
Finally, I go to the Obj Game Controller Create Event. And then I get access to UI Layer ID by calling Layer Get ID. I also use Layer Set Visible UI Layer ID false to hide the UI at the start. In the alarm zero, when time remaining is less or equal zero, I set layer visible to true. And then I do not restart the alarm, so time stops decreasing. Finally, I need to prevent player from moving when the game is over. In the Object Player event, at the beginning I check that the game controller time remaining is more than zero. And step 9. Let's make the game restartable. In the Object button, we add event for mouse left pressed. And there I just restart the room. Here it is. In this short tutorial you create your first game, catch a coin, and you also use and learn important fundamental techniques. Player movement with normalized diagonal movement collectible objects that relocate to random spawn points, game controller tracking game state, and alarm-based countdown and events, and finally, UI layers and game restart button. And that is it, a simple working game made in Game Maker in under half an hour. If you want to try some of the games I make in Game Maker or would like to watch the vlogs I do, check the links in description. Thanks for watching and see you around!